I'm going to be showing off a few things in the brand new Corel Painter 2019, which just released on Tuesday. So um, I, I would assume that most of you have figured that out by now. If not, then you're going to be introduced to everything new to Painter, and we're extremely excited about this. So I'm going to kick things off with a slideshow presentation. We are going to be showing a lot of performance capabilities today. And sometimes when we present online, it's not exactly real time to all of you. Um, I'm going to do my best to show things off, but I encourage you to download the free 30 day trial and check it out for yourself. That's the best way to test it. About this key image, first of all, I want to thank all of you that contributed artwork to our artwork call out this year. We work things a little bit differently. These happen to be, this is two different works of art that we combined together from two different artists. And I think it's a really exciting image. It's very interesting. So it was Bruno and Mohammed, and we're so thankful for their artwork contributions to the Painter 2019 launch. So as far as what Corel Painter stands for, we really haven't changed any of that. We're known for being the world's most realistic natural media and also pushing the boundaries of what is possible in the digital art world. And we always strive to do that. With this particular version of the product, we truly tried to focus on capabilities that would be a benefit to all of our artist types. I'm sure you're all familiar with the fact that we do cater to a variety of different types of artists. And typically with each version of the product, we try and release a couple features that may cater to somebody like a photo artist or a concept artist, illustrators. This time around, the tools that we added in will really benefit everybody as a whole. And that was very important to the engineering team and the product team this time around because there were many requests that you all had that we wanted to try to do our best to fulfill. You'll see exactly what we did in just a minute. Here is actually the full, I wanted to be sure to show the full works of art. Actually, Mohammed's was um, a half as it was, but we ended up flipping that and then we combined that with Bruno's photo art on the left that you see here. And these are the full versions. Both of these artists are on ArtStation if you wanted to go and check them out. All right, so just some of the basics that you need to know. We haven't changed the pricing. We haven't gone to a subscription model. So the pricing remains the same at 429 full, 229 to upgrade. The good thing is right now, because we just launched on Tuesday, we have a limited time pricing for all of you to purchase right now at 45% off. If you own any previous version of Painter, even back to the Meta Creations days, you are eligible for this 45% off. I put a bit.ly link right there, but we'll also be sure to link you up in the email that will go out from GoToMeeting that will also have the recording for the session. For those of you that do prefer to purchase the box product, we're going to begin shipping that on July 17th. So it's typically a couple weeks after the launch date when we begin shipping the product. And we've localized this. It's the same languages, English, French, German, Chinese, traditional, and Japanese. And of course, Painter is still cross-platform compatible. Okay, so what was our focus? Our clear focus was to improve the performance of Painter as a whole. That encompasses quite a few things. Number one, modernizing the UI. That's something that you guys have been requesting for quite some time. So we did extensive work in revamping almost all of the icons that you see in Painter. That's about 650 icons. It's got a dark, sleek, elegant UI that looks and performs like modern software should. So we really did a lot to clean up the UI or the user interface. Along with the performance enhancements, you're going to see your brushes performing much, much faster. And the stats that you've seen on the website, up to 50% performance enhancement with your brushes, that relates to our minimum system requirements, which would be on a core two system. So even those of you that don't have you know, a machine that's blazing, blazing fast, 
you're still going to reap the benefits of these performance improvements that we have made. We did look at top user requests and we did our best to get those, those top requests in this time. We would love to hear your feedback in the future. And actually from the overview tab on the website, there's an email that you can send things to. And you can also go to our Painter Factory. And the Painter Factory is a great place. It's our community site. If you wanna get technical, if you wanna collaborate with others that are very passionate, and if you wanna hear some updates from the Painter team, that's the place to go. And that's just painterfactory.com. And then of course, it's very important to always give you some new brushes. So we have 36 additional brushes and also a, in, included in that is a brand new brush category called the stamps. And I'll show you a little bit about the stamps here today and ways that you can use them in illustrations and also in photo art. So here's a quick glimpse of the redesigned UI. So that nice dark theme, all of the icons, you'll see when I'm actually in there and working how much nicer and clearer the icons are. There's a great highlight. So if you're a keyboard shortcut kind of person, I love how I can clearly see the tool that is selected. We also worked on the sliders and compared to 2018, you had a tiny little circle to grab onto and they were pretty speedy. Um, it was hard to get the exact adjustment that you wanted to. So we did a lot of work on those as well. All of these, you know, you'll see it in the toolbox, the property bar, in the variety of menus, and I'll point everything out as I'm going through the UI. So just to give you a visual, and I can show you this if there's a request to see the user interface themes. The reason that I put these in slides is because in order to show or load up a new theme, I have to close out a painter and open it back up. So with an online presentation, I didn't think that would be the most efficient use of our time. If you find that you're, you don't wanna use the dark UI for a particular workflow, or if you prefer one of the previous themes, you can certainly switch back to those. So we've got a medium gray theme, there's also a light gray theme. There's a frost theme and a sepia theme. So those are still in there and I'll go into the preferences and I'll show you where you can select these if you prefer. But the dark theme is what's going to load up by default. All right, so as far as the performance boost, I kind of already spoke to this, but there's enhanced support for multi-core processors and CPUs up to 50% faster brushing and these performance enhancements, they're really gonna come into play if you're working with large size brushes. You've got a large canvas. If you have a, a document that has tons of layers, you're really gonna see a difference in the speed at which you can work in Painter in 2019. As well, when you're just navigating around your document, and I should mention, because I don't have a video on myself, that I have a Wacom Intuos tablet here, which is touch enabled. I happen to have the medium size, but they came out with a new line of Intuos products just a couple months ago. So I'd recommend that you go to their website and check things out because the pricing ranges from very reasonable to if you want the fully loaded, if you even want a um, pen computer, you can get that. So I'm just using the Intuos tablet here and it works wonderfully. So with the touch enablement, I'm able to pan, zoom and rotate using two fingers on my tablet here. I could also do that on my touchpad, on my system, as well if you have a Windows multi-touch system, you're gonna see great improvements. So I'm gonna compare and contrast between 2018 and 2019. I'm gonna try and hop back and forth and show you real time exactly what these differences are. And then there's also a new drag to zoom or a scrubby zoom functionality, which comes in really handy. All right, so as far as the new content, um, one thing, well, actually I didn't mention two of these. So we have a new color workflow and I'll show you a couple different locations that you can work with this, but the main color wheel, we've adjusted the grabber handles so that it's much easier to see the color that you have selected, much easier to actually grab the handles. 
and adjust either your hue or your saturation and value. And because there's a darker background behind that color wheel, it's much easier to see your selected color. And then you'll also see in the color sets, there's a darker background there where it was white previously. So that's also much easier for you to see, identify and select colors that you'd like to incorporate into your artwork. We've got those 36 new brushes and these are scattered throughout a variety of brush categories. But if any of you have already downloaded the trial, what you will find is that I had Painter Masters create tutorials for the new brushes. If you're curious, if you wanna see how they work, please um, check out our video tutorials. And if there's anything that you don't see there that you'd like to have, just let me know. Um, I'm more than happy to develop new content for you. And then the new stamps brush category, of course. So we'll show that off here today. Now here's another thing I should mention. So if you're trying to search, I, I put a screenshot of all the new brushes. There's a brush search that unfortunately at the moment is broken. We had it all fixed up, running in 2019, but when Windows released their new update, so the Fall Creator update broke it, we fixed it, and then they released a new update, and unfortunately, under Windows only, it works in Mac, but under Windows, it's broken right now. So it's a priority for us to work with them and resolve this as soon as possible. And we are on that right now. So as soon as it's fixed, we will announce that and let you know. I'm happy, I actually posted in the factory all of the new brushes in case you wanna know exactly what they are if you're on a Windows platform. All right, so before you start painting, we've got some recommendations for you. Number one, Wacom released a new driver. So if you are using a Wacom tablet, I know that there've been some challenges with the previous driver. For Painter 2019, the new driver that was released on June 21st works wonderfully. So we highly recommend that you download that if you want a great experience in Painter. And I think Chris is going to pop that into the um, chat window or in the questions panel for you. And I can also send the link to the drivers after this. And then it was the 1803 Windows update that broke the search. If you're still on the Fall Creator update, then your Painter 2019 brush search is going to function but it will not work in versions earlier than 2019. If you updated to the new release, then it's broken in 2019 and in the earlier products. So I just wanted to make sure that everybody was aware of that and that we're on it. And as far as training goes, I, I do have to say, I didn't look how many of the masters are on the line here today. The training that jumped out at me that I knew was already available is what I put here. This is by no means the extent of training that's going to be offered. Digital Art Academy has their Painter 2019 course ready to roll. And it's run by Painter Masters. So if you want something right now, go to Digital Art Academy, and then you can just click courses and you can see the variety of offerings that they have. And Aaron Rutten is also pre-selling, um, he's doing a pre-order for a 2019 online course as well. These are all online. So if you want something now, go ahead and visit their websites. And Aaron also created a really fantastic overview video of everything that's new in 2019. So you can go to his YouTube site or you can probably get to it right from AaronRutten.com as well. And thanks for doing that, Aaron. It was a fantastic video. And then we'll keep you updated as I hear from the masters as they're adding new courses. We'll certainly let you know. To begin with, I'll go ahead and open up Painter 2018. So when you first launch Painter, the welcome screen will greet you. We've got the information about 2019 here. That's also going to offer you the special price that we had just mentioned right from within Painter. You know, feel free to launch that and click away or you can go to the link that we sent. So Painter 2018, this is the default interface that you had. And although this was considered dark gray, it truly, is it's not 
as dark of a gray as I would have liked to have seen, which is why we came out with 2019, a much darker user interface. Just at a first glance, you know, over here on the left, we've got our toolbox. And as you select tools, there is a highlight color. It doesn't stand out as well as I might like against the the gray color that we have. And even if I begin to do things like uh, use my keyboard, if I press M, then I'm gonna get the magnifying glass. Or if I press the space bar, it gives me the grabber hand. And you can see um, you know, the highlights as you're just kind of using keyboard commands don't really stand out quite as well as they should. In addition to that, if I come up to the property bar here, and I just open up a slider. I've got a little bit of an offset away from, so it, it extends from this brush circle over to the left. And then the actual grabber handle itself is pretty small. And then once you get it, it's zippy. So it's hard to get smaller increments if you want to. We've made improvements to many of these things. Let's go ahead and hop over to 2019. And to kick things off, in the welcome book here, um, you can see everything that's new and we've got video tutorials under the tutorials. This is where I mentioned that I had the masters create tutorials for the variety of brushes and also the patterns. If you haven't checked these out, please come in here and take a look at these videos. There's tons to choose from. And we even have a, a brand new beginner getting started series that Cher Pendarvis created. So if you're brand new to Painter, that's probably where it might be logical for you to begin. And you can get that right from this first option on the left here. And then of course we have the galleries and much of this artwork was contributed by the community and then we have painter master artwork so there's just really fantastic works of art in here i was so impressed this year and so excited that so many of you contributed to our gallery and just in case you're not familiar with where you can contribute your works i'll show you at the very end where you can go to upload your artwork so this is the welcome book and then last but not least we just recently released some new brush packs, and if you're not aware of them, they're pretty cool. They emulate traditional art masters, and we've got things like the 1889 Post-Impressionism, if you want to imitate Vincent van Gogh, if you like pointillism, or maybe Cezanne, Klimt. These packs are pretty neat, and we're getting really great feedback about them. So I'll go ahead and close this out. And here we are in 2019. And I just wanted to point out, I set my resolution to 1920 by 1080 because I wanted to make sure that you could all clearly see the icons. But over on the left, we've got the toolbar. And it's nice and dark. The, the highlight is beautiful. It stands out clearly. Not gonna have any issues seeing what tool we have selected. And they're also much crisper so they're just clean and crisp and you can clearly identify what the tool is going to do for you and then if we come up to the top here and we go to the sliders and i've got the magnifying glass so that's why i just kind of zoomed in um, but here are the brand new sliders they're aligned nicely underneath the drop down itself and then i can also easily grab and adjust this slider. And right now I am using my stylus to do this. If I hold down the control key, that allows me to go much slower. So if you wanna get, you know, I mentioned in 2018, it just was very zippy. You can go slow-mo if you want to by holding the control key. So that's just a, a quick peek at some of the things that are new. Now I'm gonna come back to 2018 here and make sure that we still have our magnifying glass selected. And let's just try out the zoom capabilities. So in 2018, I've got my stylus and if I just click, it's gonna zoom in at 10% increments. You could also come up here on the slider and you could zoom in. 
let's just set this to uh, we'll we'll just make it to fit the screen. And now I'm going to get rid of my stylus and I'm going to use my multi touch. So if I come to the tablet with my two fingers, yes, I can use the multi touch, but it's not super controlled. And the other thing that's happening, and I, I really truly hope that this is um, being showcased through GoToMeeting, is that the canvas is flashing every single time that I'm, I'm doing a, a zoom in. It's kind of flash, 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 flash. So it's not super smooth. And even if we wanted to do something like pan the canvas, depending upon the size of the document, it can get really laggy and chuggy. In 2019, if I come over here, and we'll do the same thing. I still have the magnifying glass selected, and I'm gonna go ahead and with my two fingers, voila, there's no flashing of the canvas. It's super controlled. So, you know, I can do my two finger pan. I can pinch out to zoom in. I can pinch my fingers in to zoom out. Double tap will reset the canvas to fit the screen for me. So it's just much, much smoother this time around. And I encourage you all to check this out on your own system. All right, so for a second, um, I'm just gonna take a brief break to go into the preferences here because I had mentioned that you can change your interface if you would like to. So if you go edit preferences and I'm gonna go to interface, this is where by default we've got the dark gray color theme. You can certainly switch to any of the others that I gave you a snapshot of in the slides. And then all you have to do is close painter and reboot. One other thing that I like to do is to change the background color of my canvas. And um, right now I've got it set to a dark gray, but if we were zoomed out a little bit, you'll see that that gray color behind there, that's the color that you can set based on your preference as you're working on different types of art. So I've got mine set to a nice dark gray to make my canvas stand out. So now let's look at, we've seen you know, just the general UI and the zooming capabilities, but we haven't taken a peek at the brush performance yet. So at this point in time, I'm gonna go ahead and create a new canvas. And this is a standard print size, 20 by 24. We could even bump this up bigger. Let's say we go 40, we'll do 40 by 40. 200. Okay, so this is a pretty large size canvas here, and I'll just zoom in so that you can see this close up. And I'm going to grab my brush. You can click the B key to get your brush tool if you want. And I have got thick paint selected. And this is a really good example of a brush category, and these types of variants are pretty processor intensive. So if you want to test a, a brush out, you might want to try one of these thick paint brushes. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my heavy loaded palette knife. And when I come over to my color wheel, and I can point this out at this point in time, um, see how the grabber handles, the old ones, it's, it was the rectangle, and then you just had the crosshair previously. So you couldn't actually see your um, saturation or value color as you're moving around in here before. So we updated these grabber handles to make things much more obvious. And we also darken the color behind the wheel itself so that your selected color stands out much better. So I'm going to bump the size of this brush up. So let's say we wanna do a 250 size brush and pay attention. So my brush cursor right now is set to that little brush icon. And when I click to paint, Okay, I'm done with that stroke. I've been done for quite a while. So this painter is chugging away and it's continuing to draw the um, stroke for me. And this is where you may have experienced that lag previously. Now, the brush icon itself, we've made some improvements to enhance the performance with that. And I'll show you that when we get over to 2019 
and you know the physical um, time that it takes these strokes to render out is so much faster in 2019. All right, hopefully that came across, Chris. Yeah, I think it's really emphasized, Dania. So looking forward to seeing what it looks like in 2019. All right, so we will set up a new canvas, same size, 40 by 40, 200 resolution, and we will scrubby zoom in. I think I forgot to show you guys that one. So I've got the stylus in hand, and when I tap down, I either move, I can move down or up or left or right to zoom in or out of the canvas. That's another new enhancement with 2019. We've got the same brush, the heavy loaded palette knife, and we want the brush to be the same size. So I think it was 250, correct me if I'm wrong. And then we'll, we'll just leave that color as it is. And now I'm stroking the canvas and it's zipping along, okay? So if I wanted to select a different color. Now, typically, you're not gonna be working with a canvas that is quite as large as what we have here. The brush size itself is also quite large. I could even make this 350. Um, you're just gonna experience a much nicer performance enhancement this time around. And one thing that I noticed when Aaron Rutten, when I watched his video on the 2019 features, it was very interesting what he recommended for people to do. And that was try this out in another painting application, create a huge size canvas or document, size your brush up, push it to the max and see if that application performs real time as well. And I guarantee, it's not going to. So it's not just a performance issue with Painter. It probably happens in other applications as well. The other thing that I can point out, because I was talking about this brush cursor. So right now you can see my brush and I, I see a little icon there. But when I go to paint, it disappears. So this is our enhanced brush ghost. And this also improves the speed of your brush strokes because it's not having to render out that little icon while you're painting, it goes away. Now, some of you might prefer to have that enhanced brush ghost. You might like to see your brush tip, but you know, I just wanted to point out that it is something that you can make the adjustment to. So if we come back in here and we take a look at underperformance. So in addition to the brush cursor, so right now I'm using the brush ghost, you can change the shape of the icon if you want to. When, and when you click down, it's gonna disappear. I actually prefer to have an enhanced brush ghost. And then when I go to paint, it's gonna eliminate the, the brush ghost and it's just gonna give me the what I just showed you, basically nothing. And now let's go to performance. So depending upon the kind of system that you're working with, our default memory usage is set at about 80%, and that's what we recommend. I, I never have gone in and actually changed that, but if you have a multi-core system and you wanna bump this up higher, go ahead, go for it. Come in here and you can change the multi-core usage you can also take advantage of a scratch drive if you have one. And then finally, the default levels of undo are 32. And if you lower this, that will also improve performance. So there's a bunch of options you know, that you can play around with to en enhance your performance if you're still not getting quite what you need. And those are all just in the preferences here. Question is, uh, is there a blend between colors that you are painting? So is yes. that a setting or is that something that, that happens just, um, have you predetermined that? It's a good question. Um, so it depends on the type of brushes that you choose. So by default, many of the thick paint brushes will automatically blend. Um, things like the artist oils will also blend on the canvas. Um, it just depends on the brush that you're working with. So things like the hard media, let's see if I grab a, a, a chalk here. And this is, this is good because I can also mention the performance of the brushes. You know, we talked about the size of the brush, also the type of brush that you choose. If you're gonna choose a real watercolor 
or a thick paint. Um, by default, those are going to be a little more processor intensive, where something like a chalk is going to probably be pretty zippy no matter what you do. So some of the brushes blend and some don't. And to be honest, I don't know if there's a, a super easy way to tell which ones will blend or which ones won't. But on the property bar here, you can see you can control and you can see when this shows up for the brush that you have selected, um, the bleed. So that is how much the colors are going to smear together with colors that are already on the canvas and you can make your own adjustment to brushes on the fly. So anytime you start making adjustments to these options on the property bar, you're in essence customizing a brush. And that's what Painter is wonderful for. You can customize to your heart's content and then you can save your brush variant. I encourage you to experiment with the variety of options that are available, but it is something that is meant for when you're you've gotten your feet wet with the standard brushes and you're ready to move on and start customizing for your own workflow and this is why we also created additional brush packs because a lot of those are you know the customization is done for you for particular workflows so that's why people enjoy to use the brush packs because then they don't have to take the time to customize their own but if you have friends or fellow artists that create brushes you can also import their brushes. So it's a, it's a great way to share amongst one another. All right, so did that answer it? It was very long-winded. <laughs> I think yeah. it did, there's been no, no follow-up since, Tanya. Okay, all right. I will try not to talk so much. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and now what I'd like to do is, let's close out of this document here. I'm going to open up, let's see, maybe I'll open up some photo art to work with. So let's grab Andre Leonard. He created this, this nice photo artwork for us. And what I'd like to show you guys is a little bit about the stamps. So if we come up here and in the brush selector, I'm going to scroll down and we're going to find the stamps category here. And maybe what I'd like to do is add a, a cool tattoo to one of these girls. So right now I've got the tribal tattoo. And this is why I like the Enhanced Brush Ghost, in particular with these stamps, because if I just had a circle, it would not be representing what that stamp actually was and the physical size of it. So I can size these up, size them down. Um, you can use the property bar or keyboard commands in order to do this. And these stamps are, they're pretty neat. So right now we just have our canvas selected and up on the property bar, when you have a, a stamp, one option that you're going to get, if you just want to work on a layer or the canvas and you don't want to separate the stamp onto another layer, you still have the ability to set merge modes. So let me just show you, we'll, um, I'm gonna press the option key and I'm gonna select a color from within the painting here. And we'll go ahead over to her arm and I have my stylus selected right now. And you know what, I'm gonna zoom in even further so that you can see. So when I am using the stylus with a stamp, these brushes are not really made to click and do a brush stroke like this. So that was one continuous brush, brush stroke that's just gonna keep stamping out. When I wanna add a, a tattoo or an embellishment to existing artwork, I'm just gonna do a single tap. Now when I'm using the stylus, what happened here is I used a very light level of pressure so I find when I'm working with the stamps, even if I do try to press down a little bit harder, that worked a little bit better, but it's kind of hard to control the level of the pressure. Um, so if you want kind of a nice dark stamp to begin with, you can use your mouse or your touchpad and it will stamp much darker by default. You can also switch your merge modes. So if you're choosing not to separate onto a different layer. Uh, now I can say multiply. Um, we could do things like screen, dark, and lighten. So all the same options that you have had for your layer composite methods, 
These can also apply to stamps, but they don't have to be on a layer. All right, so let's come back up here and I'm gonna grab the dragon tattoo and see here, this is a pretty large size brush. So one thing with the stamps is however you capture the dab. So you can create your own custom stamps and I'll show you how to do that. But in order to rotate this, that's when you're gonna to want to open up your brush controls. So I had this question recently about the stamps. Well, what if I wanna give it, you know, I wanna put it on our arm over here, but I wanna rotate it to the right a little bit. So this is where I can open up my brush controls. Oh, there we go. And I have something called angle within here. So we'll open that up. And I'm also going to open up the general brush controls because combining both of these together, I'll have a preview of the actual stamp while I'm adjusting the angle. So coming in here, let's see, I actually want, I'm gonna tilt his head up just a tiny bit more. Okay, so I can make adjustments using these sliders so that we can control exactly how this stamp is going to appear. And that's too big, so I'm gonna size it down a little bit, or you know what, we could make it a little bit bigger and kind of have it wrap around her arm here. So this time I am going to add it onto a new layer and I will set this to multiply. And the nice thing about these stamps that I didn't point out yet is that they also incorporate whatever paper texture is selected here. So if I just come here and I'm gonna make sure maybe we'll grab this blue and now I, I stamp this down here that's maybe a little bit darker than I might like. I could use a little bit lighter pressure and it actually looks as if it's wrapping around her arm there. But as you change your paper texture, so now I'm gonna press a little bit lighter, you can actually see how the paper textures are incorporated into the stamps as well. So you can kind of experiment to your heart's desire with these. Let's get my brush back here. I don't, that texture is not really appropriate for what we're doing. Um, so there you go. So these are just some of the custom stamps that are included with Painter. So you have things like the airplane tamp graph, atomic dent, the dragon tattoo, rocks, scars, trees, tribal tattoos, you know, even things like the dents. Let's close out of these brush controls so that you guys can see a little bit better. I'm gonna open up another image here. This is one of my favorites by Stephen Hansen. If you just wanna add a little bit of texture to your image, the stamps can come in handy as well. So I'm gonna sample from the dark color right there and add a little bit of freckly texture to our gorilla here. And once again, you know, I could have adjusted the merge mode before doing this or put it on a layer and then you can make your adjustments after you place the stamp into your artwork. So there's all kinds of neat options with the stamps. So I encourage you to play with the defaults and you can also customize your own. So if I close out of this for a second. Hey, Tanya, while you're doing that, um, I have a yeah. quick question for you. Mm -hmm. Are you able to explain the difference between uh, the stamp brushes and image hoses? The image hoses are, let's see here, let me just open up a new canvas. Oh, we don't need this huge canvas. So this is a good opportunity. Another new thing that we have included in 2019 are standard canvas sizes. I know that I get this question a lot from you guys in our webinar series. So these are set up so that you can choose a standard print size by default. So we'll just go ahead and choose this one right here. And I actually don't need this layer, so let's go ahead and delete that layer. And we'll work on the canvas. Okay, so we were, I was asked, <laughs> what is the image hose? So the image hose, these, instead of having a, a grayscale image to work with. These, you can capture um, colorized images if I wanted something like a flower, and these are all pressure sensitive. And we've actually preset a variety of 
ways that the image hose will spray out for you so that you don't have to do any work of customizing. So this is more for adding, let's say that I captured a tree and I wanted to make a forest. I could quickly do that with the image hose just by spraying it out in one foul swoop using um, you know, the preset options that we have right here or you know, adding flowers in a field or leaves to a tree or there's all kinds of options, but the difference is this is more where you can capture a full colorized image and then you can spray it out. And it's not sensitive to the paper texture that you have selected. Um, so these are more, I think they stand out a little bit more than the stamps do, where the stamps can actually blend into your artwork and look like they're wrapping around things, where these are more you would create you know, what you wanted to spray out and there's not a whole lot of adjustments that you could do outside of composite methods or adjusting the opacity level. I hope that made sense and if not, we can <laughs> follow up with that one. Okay, so I've got another really neat illustration and I'll go ahead and zoom in on this guy right here. So it kind of looks like his little characters already had stamps on them. And I could have recreated one of these gears and created a stamp out of that, but we'll have a little bit of fun. Um, I asked Don Seedmiller if I could use one of his works of art to create a stamp from. So that's what I'm gonna do here today. And another thing, that I forgot to show you guys. So we've seen the color wheel over here with these improved grabber handles and then the color set libraries. You know, we've got this darker background, but there's also something called the temporal color selector. And that's in Painter 2019. You had the temporal color wheel in 2018. So if I wanna open up the temporal color selector, I'm gonna do um, control option two and here is this wonderful color wheel that I can now pull out and float over my artwork. So I can place it wherever I want. I can also resize the color selector. So when you see the crosshairs there, you can shrink or size up the color selector to suit the size of the document that you're working on. But the really great thing about this is this right here. So this pen now, if um, and we still have an image hose, so let's go back to the stamps. And I've got my tribal tattoo. And when I click to stamp down, it's not closing out of the color wheel, which is really great because before we've got the color wheel. And when I go to paint, bye bye, it's gone. And then if you want to open it back up again, then you have to use the keyboard command and then it follows your mouse. So it doesn't stay where I wanted it to stay. If I paint over here, then it's gonna move over there the next time I open it up. So it sounds like a little thing, but it was a nice improvement. So I think at this point we can close out of 2018. And we'll come back over here and get to the business of making this stamp. So let's just close these guys out. And so I'm gonna start, um, so I've got the tribal tattoo selected and I happen to like the way that this by default incorporates paper textures and just kind of the default settings with that brush. So to begin with, I am going to create my own new brush category and I'm gonna call this Tanya's brushes. Okay, and whatever brush that you have selected, when you create a new brush category, it'll put that brush into your library by default. You're not stuck with it there. We can get rid of it later if we want to. But now I've got my own cool new brush category that um, I can create brushes from scratch or we could take brushes from other categories and dump it into our own custom brush category. But what we wanna do is create a custom brush. So let's open up this really funny illustration from Don Siegmiller. And in order to create my own brush, you can either paint on the canvas, so you can make your own illustration and then you can capture that for time's sake. Thank goodness I have this illustration from Don. So I am going to, you can come over to the toolbar and you can either use a selection tool or I'm just gonna say Control A or Command A, depending upon your platform. 
I'm going to select everything that I've got here. And we are going to say capture dab. Okay check it out okay so now when I move my brush over to the canvas it's showing me because I have the enhanced brush ghost that I now have Don's little guy as a stamp okay so I want to save this before we try and start working with it so by default because we started with the tribal tattoo that's the name it's given it but this is a dangerous dog by Don Steve Miller all right, so now we can close out of this guy. Okay, we don't need to save it. And here we are back over with our, um, our crazy character. And let's see, maybe I actually think a, a little bit of a gray tone might work well for this. Okay, and I'm gonna grab my brush and we're gonna stamp it down. So, okay, depending upon how many times I click to stamp down and depending upon where I go, um, I mean, you can stamp this thing wherever you want. But what's cool about it is that it actually blends into your existing artwork very well. So the merge mode is set to multiply up here um, so it's super fun. <laughs> I've now created quite a few different stamps to play around with, but thanks to Don for just letting me use his crazy little character here. And once again, if you switch your paper texture, you're going to get a different kind of look to this. So that I don't like so much. So some textures work better than others. And, you know, if this was even a photograph, you could capture a texture of skin so that your stamp would have that particular type of texture incorporated within it. So that's how quick and easy it is to, I mean, I made a stamp brush, but you can customize any brush in Painter, starting with a brush that you kind of like to begin with and capture your own dab and save away. So I think, um, with that, that was most of what I wanted to show you guys here today. Even if I wanted to show more, I am pretty much running out of time. So remember that there's all kinds of new amazing brushes to play with. And if you go to, and I can show you this real quick here, Painter Factory. In this product discussion. So in order to use the Painter Factory, you do need to become a member. So you can just sign up and um, pop in here. And under the Painter product discussion, this is where I have posted the information about the, um, the Windows search and also all of the new brushes. So what category and what variants are available. So you can come there. You can also go to the Discovery Center. And this is where I mentioned, this is where we kind of scope out and find new artists because we have user galleries where you can upload your artwork. Here's the digital art gallery. And once the artwork is in here, it makes it very easy for me to then contact you and see if you're up for us um, posting your artwork and talking about you a little bit. So I encourage you to post your work there. And if you have questions or, you know, more technical aspect of things, Painter Factory. Want to post your artwork? Go into our Discovery Center. And there's also tons of learning content in here as well. And then just to recap, here is Aaron's training course. And we're happy to give you that link, Digital Art Academy. And I know that they had a fresh start, New Painter 2019. So they're getting ready to roll that out. We'll give you the link for your Wacom driver. We recommend that you download that. And of course, do not forget about our special pricing. We will be sure to give you the link to this page so that you can get the super special 45% off pricing 
to upgrade to Painter 2019. Painter 2019, we really truly focused on what we can do to impact 100% of the user base. So the new UI, as Tani has shown, looks fantastic. All those new icons are easy to work with, they're easy to see, they're easy to use. Uh, the new sliders, um, the new functionality, the, the many bug fixes that we brought in and enhanced as well. Um, and then of course, performance, I think, you know, it, it's one thing to see it on the screen, but I highly recommend to those that haven't yet, uh, go in, go to painterartist.com and download the trial and you'll really experience it for yourself. Um, this painter looks and feels very different than any other version of painter. So I think everybody's going to be really excited to get in there. And once you try it out, um, I think you're going to be very impressed by it. So Tanya, thanks so much for the demo today. And thank you everybody else for joining in on this call. And I, I'm sorry, guys, I forgot to show you the new patterns in the pattern pens, but I just threw them out there for you to see. Um, there are five new patterns and a couple new pattern pens that you can work with. And the new patterns that we created are very realistic. So moss and damaged wall and fire and hazard tape. So check those out as well. But thank you so much to everybody for spending some time this afternoon with us. We hope that you enjoy the new Painter 2019 and feel free to send us feedback. We love to hear what you think. So social media, factory, all those places are wonderful for us to actually see what you think. Mm -hmm.